got emergency power. It's eaten everything else. You've got to kill it now. All guards to converge on the Mellotron cage immediately. Civilians, let them through! Cover the north wall! Red Division maintain suppressing water along the perimeter!
So long, I nearly forgot how the thrill of the fight makes me feel alive! Done playing with my children. Off round. Then I, Chrysalis, Queen of the Changelings, shall eat your bones. Come and embrace death, fool! Alright, let's go! We want questions. Yeah, answer our questions. Or you'll be answering too! This cupcake! Tell the cotton candy pony to buck off. If you're not gonna take this seriously, you might as well kill me now. Hey, I'm not made of cotton candy. Although being made of cotton candy would be nice. Shut your mouth! Geez, aggressive much? 
If you want me answering your questions, I'll answer them. Okay, question one. How did you find us? <laughs> you know Demo Man can find you with his powers, right? I'm aware of that, but I'm talking about you- And I suggest you find some better place to hide. That doesn't sound good. What is it? The demo man is here! Uh-oh. Everyone, get upstairs. I don't think so. <laughs> You sent for me, your highness? Well, if it isn't my favorite little pink dragon. Pink? I think I'm more of a mauve. Oh. Sorry. You were saying? Spike. Have you ever wondered where you came from? Sure, all the time. But Twilight doesn't have any idea. No, she wouldn't, since she got your egg from me. Is there a reason you have never asked me where you came from? Oh. I suppose that would have been an obvious question to ask. I guess I thought because you and Twilight were so close, that if Twilight didn't know, it was because you didn't know either. She never asked me that question, Spike. Isn't that curious? I suppose so. So what is the point of all these questions? I can give you the answer to the question. I know where you came from. I even know who your real parents are. You do? Really? Oh my. Is something the matter? My whole life I've wondered about these things. But now that you're offering me the answer, I'm too scared to ask the question. Do you not want to know? If so, go on back to Twilight. No, I didn't say that. But your highness, given recent events, I'm not so sure I should listen to what you have to say. You could just be lying to me to get to Twilight, or Ghidra. Don't be afraid, Spike. That is a very mature consideration, and it does not offend me. It is true that I have deceived ponies and manipulated events to effect vengeance upon Ghidra. But as fate would have it, you don't have to take my word on this. There is someone whom you can trust that can give you the answers that you need. Her name is Xena. Maybe you have heard of her. Yes. Twilight told me all about her. She sounds pretty scary, honestly. But she lives on the moon. And I think I'm the only dragon on the planet with no wings. I can take you there, Spike. But before I do, I need to know you are ready for the consequences. What consequences? The truth is that I saved your life. Without me, your egg would never have hatched. And would have eventually petrified, killing you. And when Xena confirms this truth, you will owe me a life debt. I need to know you are prepared to pay that debt before I take you to the moon. If that's true, I'd have to become your servant. Oh, Spike. I will make you far more than a mere servant. You will? Yes, Spike. You are far greater than you could possibly know. And if you will accept me, 
I will make you my own son. Celestia, you need to know that I will never, ever do anything to hurt Twilight. Of course, Spike. I love Twilight as well. And if at all possible, I wish to avoid harming her. And certainly, I would never ask you to raise a claw against her. Then the answer is yes, Celestia. I can accept the consequences. I can accept the truth. Then I shall take you to the moon to meet your destiny. And Spike, do call me mother. Rarity, what are you doing out here? Did you get lost on your way to the hairstylist? We all friends, aren't we, Applejack? Well, shoot, Rarity. I don't like you very much, to be honest. But we're about as good of friends as ponies can be. Why do you ask? Brutally honest as usual. I ask because I'm about to ask you for a huge favor. Oh, well, that does sound pretty darn serious. Well, go ahead, Rarity. Let's hear it. You do know that I got engaged recently. We are pretty isolated out here on the farm, Rarity. But we aren't that out of touch. Every pony knows about you and Ravinius. What's this got to do with me? I want you to plan my wedding. What? The self-appointed fashionista of the pony universe wants a simple farm filly to plan her wedding? Are you out of your apple book in mind? You hate everything to do with rural living. My pragmatic fashion sense, my rustic decor, you even hate the way the farm makes me smell. Why would you want me to plan your wedding? Oh, speaking of the farm, darling, I'd love to have the wedding right here in your barn. Are you running a fever? Seriously, lay down, I'll get you some cold water. Don't be silly, dear. I'm very much in control of my senses. Then you're gonna have to explain this to me. Because it don't make a lick of sense. Do you remember when you tried selling your home cooking at the Grand Galloping Gala? Do you remember how much Prince Blue Blood loved your apple fritters? Loved? As I recall, he spit them out and nearly gagged at the thought of having had common a food touch his royal palate. Then you should really understand everything, darling. Rarity, you little manx. You want to have a traditional down-home wedding just to stick a hoof in the eye of all those highfalutin unicorn blue bloods who didn't think you were good enough to rub flanks with. All of high society will be there, of course. To miss out on a royal wedding, that would be unthinkable for any of them. So they will come and be compelled to compliment your cooking and praise your pragmatic fashion sense and decorating. They will even compliment the smell of your pig pen. But of course, if you're not interested, Rarity, you're looking for some kind of a co-conspirator to get some kind of petty revenge on some hoofy here blue bloods. Then, you came to the right pony. Then, it is on? Oh, it is on. You are making a mistake. Cadence won't come. She hates me now. She even threatened to kill me just minutes before you abducted me. Activate the Shadow Stone. Ooh, to be young and in love. My spies have been following your little mother's quarrel. And I am not impressed. You really have no idea how Phillies think, do you? But fear not, because my calling is greater than your mare's foolish whims. Did you know that your sister got engaged just yesterday? Yes, the news came as a bit of a shock to your dear wife, I'm afraid. I waited in the shadows for the messenger to leave. You should have seen how she broke down when I gave her the news that she had delivered you into my hoof and forsaken you. It was touching in a pathetic sort of way. 
see. Here comes your princess now, riding to rescue her beloved knight in shiny armor. Again! Shining, I'm so sorry. You were right about everything. I know you can never forgive me, but I will get you out of this, I swear. Why are you doing this, Sombra? What could you hope to gain by threatening my husband? Freedom, Cadence. Only an alicorn can break this curse and release me from the Shadow Plane. So, break it, and I will return your beloved to you. Don't do it, Cadence. I'm just one pony. If you set him free, millions could die. You really do have a low opinion of me, don't you? But Celestia has had a long time to poison your mind with her revisionist history. I have indeed killed many ponies, but never without cause. I am not the mindless butcher you suppose me to be. But that really isn't relevant anyway. For she couldn't live with the guilt of letting you die when she had the chance to save you. Isn't that right, Empress? Even if I do this, you'll just kill him anyway. And me too. Hardly. I did not rise in power by killing the ponies who helped me. I gained nothing by killing you two. In fact, letting you live will serve my cause much better. Alive, you will be able to order the equestrian troops in my lands to leave, saving me the trouble of fighting them and having to kill them. So you want me to just hand the crystal ponies over to you on a platter? I can't turn them over just to save us. Well now, you have nothing to fear on that end. In fact, after you remove your soldiers from my city, I insist we hold an election to determine the will of the Crystal Ponies. If you win, you can go on ruling as the true Crystal Empress. But if I win, you must relinquish all claims to the throne and recognize me as the legitimate ruler of the Crystal Empire. An election? Are you mad? There's no way the Crystal Ponies would ever vote for you. Then you have nothing to lose by helping me, do you? Do you intend to use magic to force their wills again? Or perhaps you intend to rig the election? Celestia herself can oversee the election if it pleases you. No tricks, no magic. Just a chance to make my case, and the will of the Crystal Ponies honored is all that I ask. You can't trust him, Cadence. He'd say anything to get free. Well, then I suppose it is up to you. Believe me or not about my intent for the future, I can promise you one thing in the present. If you do not free me, Shining Armor will die. It is your move, Empress. I was your true love, Cadence. When you heard Ghidra was engaged? Shining... Please, I was wrong. I never loved him. It was always you. I believe that, Cadence. I really do. The problem isn't that you don't love me. The problem is that you don't respect me. And love without respect is just pity. You can't build a marriage on pity, Cadence. And even though Ghidra was reproaching you after you foolishly trampled on his honor, I should have been the one listing. Ever since you became the Empress, your attitude towards me has changed. I put up with it because I was taught that stallions need to always be loving and tolerant of mares. So I did everything right according to Celestia, and lost you because of it. Because when I let you get away with treating me like a servant, you lost respect for me. And that's the whole reason you went nuts when Ghidra put you in your place. Because you may say a tolerant stallion is what you want, but it's not what you need. 
What you need is a stallion who stands up for himself and has the moral strength of character to tame your wild, unruly heart. And it's pretty obvious, I'm not that stallion. So even though it will tear our little filly apart, I have to go, and you have to let me. Shining? Wait. Why, Cadence? Don't you see? If you were really the weak stallion I thought you were, you wouldn't have the moral courage to be walking away from me right now, would you? Shining? Will you give me a chance to make this right? Will you give yourself a chance to be the stallion I know you can be? I will do anything to keep you by my side. Anything? Just tell me what I have to do to make this right, and I will do it. Alright, Cadence, but you know I will have to make you pay a steep penance for all of this. Anything you ask, I will do. Then you can start by making me a sandwich. Oh. As you wish, my husband. Fluttershy, we do not have another lesson until next week. Is something the matter? No. I mean, yes, I mean, ye. Recently, I've been doing some soul-searching. I believe I have been putting off my confrontation with my father because... I love being your apprentice so much, I didn't want it to end. But recent events have made me realize that I'm being selfish. And like it or not, I have to move on. So, if you are available, I'd like to go to Cloudsdale today and get this over with. Fluttershy. I do understand. Scootaloo is enjoying a sleepover at Sweet Apple Acres tonight, so I am free to accompany you on your journey. Then let's finish this. Are you ready for this, Fluttershy? Confronting your father will not be easy. No, my prince. But I'm as ready as I will ever be. And this is something that must be done. Terror demands it. Very well, Fluttershy, but bear in mind. This is your spirit journey. And as long as you do not stray from the path, I am forbidden by Abyssal Law from interfering. I... understand. Then... begin. Who are you? I'm Fluttershy. I think maybe I have the wrong house. This is the Shy residence? Wait, you said your name is Fluttershy? Are you a relative? Maybe. I mean, I think so. What is your father's name? Daddy? Is that what his friends call him? Oh no, they call him Angel. Then... You're my little sister. Well, half-sister. Really? Mom! My big sister's at the door. What silly game are you playing now, dear? Oh, there really is someone at the door. How may I help you? I'm Fluttershy, and I'm here to speak with my father. Flutter... Shy? No. No, no, no. Get out of here. Get out now. It took him over a decade to get over your tramp mother, and if he sees you here, he's going to go right back to drinking. Get out, please go away, and don't come back. I was badly abused by father. I need answers, and I'm not leaving here until I get them. You want answers? Fine, come with me. Fluffy dear, I'm going out for a few minutes. Just watch TV until I get back. Okay, mama. You must be Prince Ghidra. I am. I don't know what business this is of yours, but if you insist on being here, don't expect any special courtesy. I am here only to observe. I shall not restrain your candid conversation. I don't have much time until Anvil gets home, and you must be gone before that. So I will be very terse about this. I and your mother were best friends growing up, but then we fell in love with the same stallion, your father. She got him, but I didn't give up. 
In fact, the night your mother went into labor, your father was with me. What do you mean, with you? Just like it sounds, Fluttershy, we were having an affair, and Anvil was about to leave your mother for me. But then your fool mother had to go and die in labor. He blamed himself for not being there to get her to the hospital. After that, he wouldn't even talk to me for years. But then you disappeared one day, and everything changed. Without you there constantly reminding him of his failures, he came back to his senses. He stopped drinking, and eventually, we got back together. We are happy now, Fluttershy, specifically because you are not part of our lives. So now that you know everything, please go away and never return. You betrayed your best friend, committed adultery, and as a direct result, my mother died alone and terrified. My father abused me because of his own guilt, and my whole youth was lost to fear, just because of your obsession with my father. And even though you stand before the victim of your crimes, you don't have even the faintest trace of regret. You are just as pathetic as your mother. Sweet sediment doesn't get you anywhere in life, honey. To get what you want, you have to get your hooves dirty. So go back to Ponyville and live out your loser life. Because that's what you are, a loser. Just like your mother. I don't care if you are an element of harmony. Ponies are gonna go on taking what's rightfully yours right up from under your nose just because you're too kind to do what needs to be done to set things right. I understand why I'm here now, Guy. It was never about my father at all. It's all about me. I have to make a choice. What choice, Fluttershy? I have to choose between my elements. I have to choose between kindness and terror. And what have you chosen, Fluttershy? Terror.